Waiting and watching for the former president's arraignment in Manhattan criminal court just hours away. On the left side of your screen, you see his home here in Manhattan, Trump Tower. And it's just a few minutes to lower Manhattan on the right side of your screen. When that gets started, we will, of course, just as we kept our word yesterday, show you his steps today as he makes his way there. He is expected to speak before and after his court appearance. And uh, former President Trump is using the indictment to fuel massive fundraising numbers. And it's working. The campaign is claiming it's raised $8 million in just the last four days. By the way, that number went up overnight by like a million. A former Obama fundraiser on what it all could mean for 2024. I think it'll play to the narrative that Donald Trump is saying they don't like him for what he's fighting for, what he stands for, and what his agenda is, and that he's fighting for Americans and there are people trying to stop him and don't like that he's fighting for the everyday American. And I think that narrative is going to be more powerful. Well, the judge in the case could slap the former president with a gag order, and that would seriously limit what he could say in the midst of a criminal trial in his White House campaign. As of now, however, the president is planning to give a speech at Mar-a-Lago when he gets home tonight. Mark Thiessen, Fox News contributor, former White House speechwriter and Washington Post columnist. What would you anticipate the president would say? Well, first of all, good luck putting a gag order on Donald Trump about anything. <laughs> that's, that's not going to go very well for, her, for, her, for whoever wants to shut, uh, shut him up. I mean, look, this is a good day for Donald Trump because it makes it, it puts him closer to winning the GOP nomination. And it's also a good day for Democrats because it puts Donald Trump closer to winning the GOP nomination. Uh, that, that, that's just a fact. I mean, the, 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 the reality is tr Trump is raising, as you say, $8 million off of this. He, he said last week he wants photos of the perp walk. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's because even though a majority of Republicans want somebody else to be the nominee, the polls show he, Trump has a commanding plurality mm -hmm. uh, of the GOP electorate, but he doesn't have a majority. So majority of Republicans don't want him to be the nominee. But even people who don't want him to be the nominee don't want our country turned into a banana republic where the justice system is well, used uh, to put, to go after political opponents. And so there's going to there a lot of those people are going to rally around Donald Trump as a result of this. And it helps him. Well, let me put some numbers alongside of what you're saying. New polling finds that while the majority of people do support the indictment of Trump, 76 percent say that politics played a role. People are evenly split at 31 percent on whether he is this strengthens or weakens our democracy as a whole. And that, that of course, being the bigger picture yeah. in all of this. But it's fascinating. You know, people just want this to shake out. And voters whom I've talked with, whether they're, you know, Republican, independents, people will tell you who they are. I don't ask. They volunteer it. And they say, look, I just want this to be over so that people can move on, move forward, yeah. get to the kitchen table issues. And if he's the one to solve their problems, they want him to be able to run and do it effectively. This feels like somebody's trying to stop them. That's what people have told me. And I've been traveling. And so I'm hearing it from different sides yeah. of the country. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, the, the reality is, you know, as you said, a majority of Republicans want someone else to be the nominee. But Trump's approved. They don't hate Donald Trump. No. <laughs> 70, say he has 77 percent approval in the Republican Party. They, they, most Republicans think he was a great president. I agree. Uh, Abraham Accords, Operation Warp Speed, taking out Soleimani. Uh, the, the, I mean, you can go down the list of accomplishments that he had in office. Uh, and uh, they, they just feel that he's going to be the most likely person to lose because Democrats have now won three elections running against Trump and the MAGA movement. They, they won the 2018 midterms and they won the 2020 election and they won the 2022 midterms. Uh, Beating candidates that were hand, the ones who cost us the election, Republicans the election, were the handpicked candidates of, of Donald Trump. And so they think their best chance, is, the Democrats do, is, is for him to be the nominee in 2024. And I think a lot of Republicans feel that way. And so they're ready to move on, but they're not ready to abandon Donald Trump to the, this sort of left wing uh, judicial establishment, which is trying to weaponize our judicial system to go after him. And, you know, the, the left always says Trump is destroying our institutions of, of our democracy. They're the one's destroying our institutions of democracy. You, when you take the justice system and use it as a weapon in politics, that's destroying our democracy. So, you know, there's a rallying effect. I understand why people want to rally around Trump, because, you know, it's, 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 it's harmful to our country what they're doing to him. Well, and I wonder how many independents you pull over if, in fact, Alvin Bragg's case falls apart. I mean, 
no one talks about all of the things that can happen mm. because he elevated from misdemeanor level to the lowest point, but they are now felonies against him. And we don't know all the details because even though there was a grand jury leak, we didn't get to see everything. Uh, Matt Whitaker, by the way, yep. uh, former acting AG under Trump, thinks that there needs to be an adjudication of, of the legal system against whoever le leaked from a grand jury. We'll see what happens after this is all over. Yeah. But, you know, independents, do you scoop them up if this case turns out to be nothing? Maybe, um, but I mean, it also might not be the only case. They might bring charges on him on January 6th and other and and on the and on the Mar-a-Lago document. So this this could be just the first legal salvo in this judicial war against Trump. I think that it probably has a negative effect on Trump and with with the swing voters. So this election is going to be decided by about 200,000 swing voters in a handful of swing states. And so how this affects them is going to decide if if, if Trump's the nominee, whether he becomes president or not. Um, they're going to be exposed every day to uh, remind of his moral turpitude about the allegations that he had an affair with a porn star and and paid hush money for it. That, that's probably not going to endear him to swing voters. Well, uh, the Republican voters, that, that's baked in. They don't care. I'll tell you what they won't be hearing. I mean, it's silence from the Biden camp right now. All the oxygen's been drained out of the room, and he's on a 20-day tour trying to convince people yeah. that our inflation isn't high and that the cost of food is something we can all live with. <laughs> I mean, he's out there on his eco economic tour That's what right the now. election should be about, Harris. Right. Those are the, <laughs> those are the issues about, that people, about poor, poor people want payoffs. to talk about. <laughs> and the last time that, that gas was as cheap as we've seen it, one of the lowest points in our lifetime, this president wasn't the one. It was the previous one. So it's really interesting. Yep, one goes silent. One comes to face an indictment. We'll cover all of it. Uh, Mark Thiessen, great to see you.